Welcome to Area Express Media. Today's guest is the executive director of the New African Institute, Simon Tasfamariam. Simon, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me on. Okay, so let's get right to it. Your account was suspended by Twitter recently, along with many other activists. Um, has Twitter given you an explanation as to why your account was suspended? Absolutely not. Um, and it wasn't just one account. It was every single account um, that I had on my phone. Uh, and um, there was no explanation. I just got this message that said that, you know, your account has been suspended and that you can basically fight it by going through some procedure that they had. And so it was just totally without any explanation. And it was both um, on Ethiopian and Eritrean activists is uh, what we've uh, come to understand. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, it's pretty diverse. Uh, Eritreans, Ethiopians, and I don't know if there are other groups, but uh, uh, even central accounts that were designed for the Horn of Africa, most notably uh, Horn of Africa Hub, which you can talk about some more. Right. Um, so getting to that, there's the No More movement that you are an integral uh, member of. Can you talk a little bit about what this movement is about? So a year ago, the war against the Ethiopian people uh, was initiated by TPLF, the Tigrayan People's Liberation Front, on uh, the night of November 3rd uh, slash morning of November 4th. So what happened was that um, they attacked the Northern Command, uh, ended up at the same time uh, massacring um, you know, many uh, people within the Tigray region, the Maikadra uh, town, um, and I mean, we're talking about hundreds dead. It was coordinated um, months in advance and uh, a horrific tragedy that, um, you know, then led to, uh, you know, the scaling up of the war, uh, the internationalization of the war. Uh, and um, so that was a year ago. And then in June, uh, there was a pulling back uh, by the federal government and then basically taking advantage of the kindness and the consideration of the government to, with a unilateral ceasefire that they had called for the um, people um, to basically make sure that famine wouldn't be kicking in uh, and they would become victims of the war. Uh, TPLF took advantage of this, went on the offensive, uh, murdered through reprisal killings to grand people, as well as uh, Eritrean refugees, as well as going on the offensive in the Amhara and or, uh, Afar regions. So then um, there's been massacre after massacre, whether we're talking about Chenna, Kobo, uh, Dese, Kombolcha, you just go down the list, all these different cities. And so um, we wanted to commemorate uh, the one year anniversary of this uh, conflict, the initiation of it. And so on November 1st, uh, it was, uh, you know, we started it. And when I say we, I'm talking about literally just random activists who had been communicating on Twitter uh, through messaging apps, just trying to, you know, support one another and put an end to this conflict um, because we're tired of war. And so we were saying literally just no more, no more to the war, no more to the terrorist uh, TPLF group that's waging this war uh, on the Ethiopian people as well as the people of the Horn of Africa. As I said, this conflict was internationalized. We're saying no more to the U.S. backing the TPLF and no more to CNN, BBC, and all the other mainstream media in the West that are manufacturing these lies and pushing uh, their agenda on the Horn of Africa, uh, which includes sanctions on Eritrea, sanctions on Ethiopia, um, continued sanctions on Somalia. No more to dangerous uh, interventions that really are uh, you know, meant for regime change through what we believe to be war and in a, way, a war of invasion as um, uh, you know, a general sitting in uh, Djibouti in the, um, uh, you know, the U.S. military base there, um, basically looking to bring war to the region. So we're saying no more to all of this stuff. And so when we said no more uh, on November 1st, just a couple days later, seeing how popular it was and how it had spread like wildfire, not only among the people of the Horn of Africa, not only among the Ethiopian people, Eritrean people, but across Africa and across the world. Uh, and there was a round of suspensions that had taken place, most notably uh, Araya Tasfamariam, uh, 
Um, his account was taken down without any explanation. And we have no understanding of what happened to him. So it's just like, you know, uh, in the digital world, kind of like a, a force coming in the middle of the night into your home and kidnapping you and not saying why, you know, why you're being detained or anything. And so in this modern day world where we depend on the digital space to voice ourselves and to communicate, to organize, uh, this is so sort of like uh, taking away, uh, you know, habeas corpus kind of, kind of uh, uh, rights. And so that was the first round. And so what we noticed this time is a second wave of this. Okay, so, and you mentioned the second wave of, of, of the of the suspension of multiple accounts. And I do recall, of course, uh, earlier, there was, a, there was another massive attempt to, to silence uh, the, global, the voice of the Global South. And I think that's what it's sounding like. Um, so a lot of, a lot of prominent um, uh, people who are on that platform, on the Twitter platform, have become victims of, uh, of uh, Twitter's um, um, censorship. Um, do you think, what do you think is the reason for why no more? I mean, you, you talked about this starting in November. We're, we're at the end of the month now, and this has gone viral across Twitter, across the diaspora, across the Horn of Africa. There's talk about it uh, moving beyond the Horn of Africa to other regions. What's contributing towards this? So really, it's just... Um... There is the resistance that comes with no more, simply verbalizing no more. From the, verbal, the verbalizing of no more, uh, there was the open identification with, by so many people saying no more that the United States, uh, I will tell you, even started to troll the people of the Horn of Africa by, and I wouldn't say, you know, the U.S. state, let's, let's say for now, you know, at least in this scenario, there was the Senate Foreign Relations Committee which through his Twitter account was trolling the people saying, do more, you know, in reference to Ethiopia. Uh, we saw folks like Cameron Hudson, uh, who back a few months ago said, we should go after rabid diaspora agitators and was saying that we should go after these fake analysts and experts or whatever uh, in order to, you know, go after activists. So you saw that, um, they made good on this by going after no more, going after activists online. And um, we saw that with the takedown of Araya Tasfamariam, as I said, and many others. Um, then uh, CNN ignoring no more. In fact, doubling down and saying that there were TPLF troops on the outskirts of the capital what they did was they ignited a fire underneath the, the Ethiopian people, as well as the people of the Horn in Africa, seeing that this was an obvious lie when TPLF was 300 kilometers outside of the capital. So how could you say it was on the outskirts? So the people demonstrated on the ground in Addis Ababa, the capital of Ethiopia. And what ended up happening is that people around the world connected with that feeling that the, the, the lies and the disinformation and you know, the, the people saying fake CNN, if you just looked at the demonstrator signs, it said fake news CNN. And imagine what it feels like to be a CNN reporter reporting on yourself, uh, you know, with people's signs saying fake news CNN, maybe out of fear, maybe, you know, we don't know, you know, just sort of the growing uh, movement. Um, CNN brought on the spokesperson for the prime minister's office, Belen Esiyum, and in her opening statement, just made this very, I mean, eloquent, uh, you know, speech. It felt like a speech. Uh, it was so wonderful. And just expressing what so many of us had felt. And that went viral. Um, and then we had demonstrations in DC, just wildcat sort of demonstrations, just in the moment, seeing what had happened in Addis Ababa, people protesting. So it was in solidarity. So no more activists were in the streets saying no more there too. And no more, they were saying, I didn't even say this, there were many signs saying no more on the streets of Addis Ababa. So from Addis to DC and just viral stuff about CNN and the fake news with Belen Esiyum, um, you know, Secretary Belen Esiyum saying, uh, you know, no more. It was the perfect time for the next big thing. And what the next big thing was are these brush fire sort of global protest that had taken place 
the Sunday afterward. And um, within just a few days time, you saw uh, progressives, um, I mean, people from all across the political spectrum in the streets of every, you know, many major cities in the West, um, as well as other places saying no more. And this was, this was coordinated through, you know, in the background, through messaging apps, totally, uh, you know, impromptu. And so this then led to uh, an eerie silence in the media about the protest, even though, pro you know, some journalists had showed up. So then this led to a growth of the movement and a belief in the unity of so many Ethiopians who were divided through uh, 27 years of TPLF rule uh, under an institutionalized form of tribalism called ethnic federalism. So this became a moment of pride for the Ethiopian people, a moment of pride for uh, you know, other peoples of the Horn of Africa, myself being an Eritrean, uh, you know, rooting on the Ethiopian people and seeing that um, you know, they're, they're very close to liberating themselves from the tyranny of TPLF and the misery and the pain and the suffering of all the massacres that they're committing. And I wanna make it very clear that we are peace activists, that we want an end to this war. Uh, and so, you know, many people in solidarity with the Ethiopian people around the world uh, were saying no more. And so I wanna make it very clear that you had progressives uh, from groups like the Black Alliance for Peace, you had the, the Answer Coalition, uh, as well as other groups that had been in the streets in solidarity with the Ethiopian and Eritrean people, uh, Somali people, the broader African peoples and all exploited peoples of the world. So this was a very strong message that uh, was felt by the, let me make it clear, Democratic Party, uh, specifically Biden's administration, which is rife with these hacks from prior uh, uh, administrations, particularly within the Democratic Party, like Susan Rice, Jeffrey Feltman, uh, Samantha Powers, um, Blinken, the protege of Susan Rice. And you just go down the list, you know, uh, one after another, these people have been creating um, havoc in the region by providing TPLF with diplomatic cover and allowing them to uh, spread their war. So, um, you know, I think this is a, a seminal moment in Ethiopian history, in African history. Um, and uh, me being an Eritrean, um, you know, Eritrea was just sanctioned, uh, you know, a, a cruel economic sanctions will, will lead to needless suffering and death in uh, my beloved country. You know, I, I, I don't wanna see our people suffer. So we want to end the sanctions. We say no more to the sanctions. We say no more to the, um, you know, the interventionist policies of the United States against the Ethiopian and uh, Horn of African peoples. And, um, and so this was the reason why this has taken off. And now we're seeing celebrities, we're seeing you know, cultural icons come out and say no more. And this is just the beginning, the movement is growing. Right, and I, and I just, I thought I saw something um, more recently with Akon having joined uh, the No More movement as well, which is uh, quite interesting to see that a lot of uh, well-known um, artists are also subscribing to this, not to mention the number of uh, athletes and uh, well-known uh, personalities in Ethiopia that have uh, joined uh, the efforts, uh, the, the No More movement in, in general. And I really want, I, I liked what you said about the No More movement being a peace movement in essence. And you talked about uh, June of this year um, and, um, and the, what's significant about that time, I think, is that there was a ceasefire, wasn't there, by the Ethiopian government, a unilateral ceasefire to end um, uh, the, the uh, battle uh, that was occurring on the ground. And yet, despite that ceasefire, the uh, TPLF continued uh, the atrocities and continued moving southwards towards the capital. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, in fact, Right when they came back into Ma'ale, uh, spokesperson of TPLF, Gata Churadda, said that they were going to carry out, quote unquote, mop up operations in Tigray. And what, that, what we found out, what that meant just a few days later, was reprisal killings against people that were working with the federal government while TPLF was in the bushes fighting the federal government and federal forces. And so um, very cruel uh, you know, entity, TPLF. 
then, as I mentioned earlier, they went after Eritrean refugees, they went after uh, uh, many others. They said that we're going to go to Addis and we're going to go to Asmara, basically mm -hmm. saying that they're going to internationalize the conflict, which they had already done back in uh, last November with uh, missile attacks on Asmara, uh, as well as other parts of Ethiopia, Gondar, uh, notably. So um, we are seeing, um, you know, the escalation of war and the United States providing TPLF with diplomatic cover. And so we're saying no more to that. We want peace in the region. We want them to accept uh, the ceasefire, unilateral ceasefire. I mean, we don't want it to be unilateral. We want it to be a, a, a ceasefire that goes both ways. But they refused, um, you know, because of the position of the United States, as well as other governments, they feel as though they can, you know, get away with anything and they feel unaccountable. And so we're saying no more to this. Right, and it's, it's the impunity um, I mean, the sanctions that we've seen recently have only targeted um, the Ethiopian and Eritrean governments, but there have been to date not a single action, punitive action taken by the United States government or any other international organization, um, the European Union. No one has actually condemned uh, to the extent that it has led to any meaningful sanctions on the ground. Is that correct? Exactly. Um, you know, you have to be able to call out TPLF at some point. You know, I don't want to pull the both sides thing. What we find is that they say, uh, you know, both sides have done such and such, but only one side is actually getting the action, uh, you know, the punitive actions uh, taken against it. And so, as I mentioned, Eritrea was sanctioned with cruel economic sanctions, which will lead to tremendous suffering of the Eritrean people. And, um, you know, Ethiopia was also sanctioned, um, notably, taken off AGOA, which will take away many jobs from the Ethiopian people, uh, and many of them women, you know, uh, working for small wages, but something that would definitely help. And, um, you know, that, that I should say that, uh, you know, they're basically taking the American economy hostage in a way. It's like they're ruling the American economy, but not speaking in the name of the, the, the American people. So saying that you don't have access to our market, it would benefit the people of the United States to have Ethiopian products. Uh, it would benefit them to have uh, Eritrean products, but instead they're closing them off. So um, they took these punitive measures against the Eritrean people and the Ethiopian people because these are forms of collective punishment. And so we are being punished as Eritrean and Ethiopian peoples, as well as the Somali peoples, um, because of uh, their interventions there. So uh, TPLF has yet to face any form of punitive measures. It's just uh, lip service. And, uh, and so we, we, need, we need real actions. No consequences for, for, for their actions thus far, despite the fact that one, uh, the first atrocity that had been reported in fact was in Mike Kadra. And, uh, and yet no, uh, no action taken against them for that. But let's talk a little bit about what you intend to do with the normal movement to um, perpetuate peace in the region. I mean, ultimately this war is gonna come to an end and there needs to be peace and reconciliation amongst all the people in the Horn of Africa, inclusive of course of the Tigray people who have suffered at the hands of the TPLF. Can, you, can we talk a little bit about how we're working towards reconciliation looking towards a, a brighter future beyond this conflict? So I don't wanna speak on behalf of the entire No More movement. Um, and I'll speak as you know, an active contributor as many others. Uh, let me just make it clear there are, there are so many diverse voices, some of them behind the scenes, some out in the open, um, wherever we are, you know, everybody's making their contributions, which is something I think we can all be very proud of. Uh, but doing my part, I believe, um, and, and if I were to have greater influence on the No More movement, uh, you know, I, I would say that um, the direction we uh, ought to be headed in is one where we're going global, uh, where we're thinking big, where we're saying, you know, let's connect with African peoples worldwide. Let's, let's connect with, uh, you know, all exploited peoples because we want justice. We're, we're peace activists and we know this war is filled with, this, this world is filled with war. Uh, we're against this. In the spirit of uh, you know, Martin Luther King, you know that um, the United States is the greatest purveyor of, uh, of violence in the world. And um, you know, living here in the United States, in the spirit of, uh, of uh, Martin Luther King, you know, we are peace activists saying um, you know, we're against the war. We're against the war on the um, Ethiopian peoples, on the Eritrean peoples, but also all the wars that are taking place on the African continent. Uh, if you look 
um, you know, what's going on in Burkina Faso and Niger, uh, French troops killing innocent protesters. You know, what we did as No More activists is we connected with that struggle and we uh, got No More uh, trending in Burkina Faso, in Niger. We provided support and solidarity for people that essentially are with, were without a voice because Ethiopia is such a large uh, country, so populous, uh, Eritrea has been resisting, um, you know, a lot of these tough actions by the United States for so many years uh, against regime change. Um, Eritrea has become very resilient and battle hardened in terms of, you know, hostilities against the nation. And so uh, when I say battle hardened, I really mean just in terms of, you know, disinformation, like coming in as like a disinformation war. And so we've become used to it. And so it provides valuable experience as Eritreans to connect with our Ethiopian brothers and sisters, our Somali brothers and sisters. And as a giant cyber um, group, uh, you know, cyber peace activist group, we can go collectively towards these various issues in the, on the African continent, whether it's Burkina, whether it's uh, Niger or wherever, we can lend a hand. And so um, we can provide, uh, you, know, uh, you know, more awareness. So I would recommend that all of us make sure that we grow conscious of, of, of everything else that's going on on the African continent. So when we say no more, as in N-O more, uh, we can also look at it as like uh, no more, to no more. So uh, K-N-O-W, uh, no more. And so... I would recommend that we know more about what's going on around us, raise awareness on the African continent, and then, uh, you know, say no more uh, to those things that we feel are wrong uh, in the spirit of, you know, peace activism. So that is what I think we should be doing. And I think we're getting there. I think people are recognizing it. People connect with us and uh, there's nothing that's going to stop us. In fact, I think the fact that they went after us will only grow the movement. It'll grow the resistance and the uh, resilience of the people and they'll see their strength. Uh, if it's not Twitter, it'll be on other platforms. If it's not on platforms, it'll be on the streets. If they stop communications with, uh, you know, cyber communications, we'll, we'll use pigeons if we have to. Uh, you know, I grew up in an era where my parents and your parents, as you know, as you know, uh, Fanon, um, you know, were, you know, communicating in very novel ways and being in, in inventive and all this stuff. And so our generation will have to get creative and find ways to show our resistance. But uh, as we know, with the, uh, as we say in Eritrea, never kneel down. And, I, and I, that's my message for everyone uh, is to never kneel down. Which is an excellent message. And, and one of the things that I wanna highlight from what you were saying, what you were alluding to was the fact that this platform that you have on Twitter um, is not the only platform for no more. Right. There, there, there are multiple platforms that can be leveraged for this no more movement to, to continue um, uh, attracting the attention that's been attracting over the past uh, four weeks. And so um, really encouraging to hear that you're going to continue doing the work, the very good work, um, the very good peace work that you're doing, which I think is uh, very important to highlight as well. So maybe. Um, I have one other question for you, and then I have uh, uh, another final question around what surprised you most about this movement. But before I get there, at the end of the day, I, we, you know, we've heard debates out there around, you know, this is against U.S. national interest in the first place. Supporting TPLF in the region um, does not do anything to stabilize the region and ultimately will destabilize it. Um, what are your thoughts around this ultimately not being in the interest of the US, uh, its partners around the world, the European Union, et cetera, um, around peace and security uh, in the region. So if, if there's this continued um, aggravating situation with the TPLF, um, why hasn't the US uh, taken more of a role in building uh, and acting as a, as a peace builder uh, in the region rather than really working against its own national security interests? That's the question that all of us have, but um, you know, you can look at all the conflicts that the United States has involved itself in and, and has initiated itself. Uh, it's never about what they claim it's about uh, when it comes to their intervention. Uh, it's always in the name of democracy, freedom, or whatever 
uh, so-called American value, you know, it, it really um, is about control, to be honest with you, because there are a group of people with special interest in the United States, as well as other Western countries and around the world that have decided we want everything for us and we want to control the resources. We want to uh, live a life outside of the people, the masses. Uh, and what they do is they go into regions and make sure that um, countries, all countries are controlled through some form of leverage such that they don't get out of line. And so what's happening is that Africa, particularly at this current moment, the Horn of Africa is liberating itself from uh, you know, colonialism or neocolonialism. And um, <clears throat> I should really say neocolonialism, the, but sometimes <laughs> it feels like the colonial era, the way things are going. Uh, and so, um, you know, I think uh, that is sort of the red line for the United States. When countries go independent and decide to be self-reliant, they become what we can call, or actually Chomsky and others have called the threat of a good example. And, um, and so uh, Eritrea has been fighting the good fight for quite some time. Um, and it's been a threat of a good example, which is why it's been targeted for so long. The Ethiopian people expunging TPLF from power uh, have uh, said uh, no more to them and have put in a more, you know, a democratic force that was, is popularly elected by 82% of the electorate in Ethiopia with 40, roughly 40% 40 uh, uh, voter registration. And so that's a very popular uh, candidate in a democratically uh, elected uh, government uh, of Ethiopia yet, and this is, you know, this is what the United States wants. This is what they claim and it's been given to them. And so what's their excuse now? And so they can, they, they were actually against the elections and claimed that there were gonna be violence and, um, and then challenged Abiy Ahmed, uh, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed. And, um, uh, and then, um, and so in spite of that, seeing that, it, I mean, he's done everything the way the United States wants it, you know, it, through even, you know, we can call some appeasement, uh, but it's not good enough. We know it's not good enough because at the end of the day, he's moving towards a more self-reliant orientation, whether you're, this is through the GERD dam, uh, which will power up Ethiopia and uh, give them a steady uh, supply of energy, which will make it more, you know, uh, capable of developing on its own. Uh, this is something that I think the United States does not like. And this is why they are attacking uh, Ethiopia, Eritrea, Somalia, the Horn of Africa, and uh, Africa at large. Okay. Well, Simon, I'm going to throw to you one last final question, which is what surprised you most about this movement? It's been four weeks. What's the most surprising thing about it? Every day I'm surprised. Uh, not only what it does internally through its resilience and its creativity, but also, uh, you know, just the external responses to it. You know, the, the, the responses have been quite draconian as we're seeing with these suspensions. In fact, it grows the resistance. And I think that's why it's just gonna keep being this back and forth between, uh, you know, those, um, you know, peace activists saying we want no more war. And then uh, the response to it, those who are proponents of war. And so it's just gonna grow and grow and grow. And it's gonna continue to be creative and it's gonna create it continue to be resilient. And I'm just excited to see where it goes. So. There's nothing they can do to stop the will of the people. The road to, to victory uh, is long, but it's certain. So, Simon, thanks so much for joining Air Express Media. Really appreciate it. And good luck on all uh, your efforts. Thank you very much.